I'm going to get you to counter potentially such a weapon attack with a synthetic ally, an everyday item. Right? So the everyday item that you might have might be something like a spare or a bag. So if you're in any way a bit of a tactical EDC geek, then you'll probably carry some kit. So in my kit, I've got a medical kit. So I've got trauma bandages, got two trauma kits, got a chest seal. I've got the means to alleviate the tension in the thorax. I've got various improvised tools that are not weapons by design that can be implemented as such. I've got the means to create cordage and cover for the easy build shelter, etc. etc. Right? Understand that EDC, everyday carry, begins with you. So when you get out of bed naked and you get in the shower, you have three elements of EDC with you all the time. First one is your mindset, your willingness to take part and be of service, be of worth. Right? The next is your skill sense, plural. You know, when you learn this shit, you become capable. The final one is your GPP, your general physical preparedness. You should be fit. You should be strong. You need to be fit to fight. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. So prepare for such. So your training should replicate the run fight part. So in class, we'll do a run, fight, run, fight, run, self-medical triage, call for help. That's the dynamic, isn't it? Yes or no? Yes. Yes. We're talking high threat solutions. That's what you're looking for. You're looking at escape at the earliest opportunity. And as soon as you escape, mitigate as best you can. So what I showed you post event, what you should do, belongs at the end of that. But you've got to train how you intend to fight. And understand that the fight part is anaerobic, ATP. It's five seconds of all out explosion. You know? It's not a five mile job, is it? Right, so you need a certain type of fitness. Well. But let's say you're one of those people and you've got a kit, you've got a bag, right? Well, I've got four stuff. Now, so here, I can put this across my body to protect myself in some way. So, in a bag like this, you want something of structural integrity. Maybe a small laptop, maybe some books. This is particularly apt with teens now. We go to college or school and there's plenty of knife stuff going on, you know, you can't have a weapon by design. Well, this comes into the category of the barrier. Right, so let's say I've got something substantially strong in here, right? But one of the things you can do is get a bag like this, just to give it some structure and integrity, is get a little chest guard for a kid's shield for a chest plate. And just put that in there because it's some structural integrity, do you see? Mm -hmm. Another thing you can do is take a ceramic tile and cover it in black tape and just slide it in the pocket. In the US they'll have a metal plate, so like go rug. It's five kilos, 10 kilos, for fitness, because you're hiking with it. But what it is also, is got fucking body armor, stop of nine mil round, right? And what I'm talking here is something of structural integrity that would allow me to stop a thrust to my throat or face, or low line, with a knife, yeah? And the tactic that I'm gonna employ here is stun and run. I'm not looking to fight the fight and teach him a lesson. I'm looking to stop myself from getting killed Getting away from me or knocked over so that I can run. So I could use it boom, this way. If I use it this way, I'm dropping my chin, I'm biting down, I'm rolling my shoulders up to protect the side of my neck, and I've got my arms up and my head framed between the two. Why am I protecting this structure? Because you're fucking right. right. So on the body, I can just push here and run. Or I could aim the high point as I can make top of the head to snap it back, get him on his heels. This kind of boom motion, boom motion, I could knock you back, skew your vision, create distance, trigger your flight response, and give me the opportunity to run. Another thing I could do if you're near a side target is I could use the bag, boom, like so, like you did with the wooden elbow. Mm -hmm. Yeah? And if I can do that with the wooden elbow, boom, I can come back, boom, this bit. You see? So I've got boom, bam, boom, and then I've got boom, one out two ends. And I can also use it for fuck off projectile. So know how you could use the bag offensively, does that make sense? Yeah. Right. Good way to practice this in your class is you should use a tie pad. It was boom, 
boom, boom. Yeah? You're gonna have a little go at that first. Right? Turn the muscle out and use it counter-offensively. Right? So we've got someone with a knife. Right? Gonna work two things, just low stab, low stab. Boom, don't have to telegraph, just right. Boom, hit in and out, not straight on. Yeah, and then angle step, sort of me. This is the one that kill you. So, first of all, low step. First thing I want to do, if I was unarmed, and I was forced to blade fend that, I need to, as it comes, pull back my body away from it, and present a structure that will allow me to stop it. Yeah, and that's to be solid. If that's past 90 degrees, it will collapse it and it will hit me. Yes, right? So I want to be able to do this off the clip and get into here, catching the arm on the retraction would be the ideal. So that would be fending with the back of your arms. I'm doing exactly the same thing, but I'm fending with the back. So I'm pulling back and presenting a structure. Right? And as I throw the structure down, it's got to be straight arms, protecting my vitals. So now I'm supported by bone. Do you see? So if you've got under a power rack about this height, or a bar that's weighted, and you try to lift this heavy weight above your head with this extension, you'd be stopped by muscle power. Do you agree? But if I took a stiff structure, got underneath it, and then straightened my whole skeleton out, I'm now supporting the load. You can support a hell of a lot more than you can lift. So you need a support structure. So if my arms are bent and he's determined, this will happen. Do you see? So I want, as that comes here, boom, that. Yeah? So as he thrusts, boom. As he thrusts, boom, boom, that. Sorry, I have to see this. <laughs> so I'm reposting. So it's periplost. It comes from fencing. Yes? Yeah. So this is how you would use this counter-offensive. Let's say that angular shot comes, but now I need to turn it, and it will be, oh! That's how you feel, because it's an old shit moment. So it's literally from there, boom, bam! Do you know what I mean? So, hitting, 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 fending, fending, hitting, swinging, brooding them in the balls if it's there, is your armory. So not left big toe in here, right big toe in there, figure it out, right? Well, ideally, you don't want to wait for him to cook off with more than one, right? Because if he's determined, he'll overwhelm you. So literally, it's a shot, boom, to, to get this stopped and then hit in the face. You're getting inside of his OODA loop. Do you understand OODA loop? You're getting inside of his OODA loop. You're making him observe and orientate that he's being assaulted. And before he can decide what to do about it, he's reorientating that you're assaulting him again. That's why it's particularly useful if you attack on more than one attack line. So if I boom, hit you high, and bam, kick you in the bollocks, I'll hit you high low. I'm giving you more to think about, do you understand? <coughs> I want to keep you constantly reacting to me. But the way you'd employ that is as soon as you stop one, repost attack and run. Don't stand here fancy. You make sense? Yeah. You would only do more than one for the purpose of the practice of the drill. What does disorientation and distraction create? Time. Time, Time opportunity, space. Yes, absolutely. So fuck off. Yes. So that's that's where we're looking at it. I'm looking at this to stop this and get gone. That is the first opportunity. So it's not about me teaching him a lesson, retribution, or winning with him on the floor. It's about stopping him from stabbing me and getting gone. So it's that, right? The so same way. So first of all, you're going to look at that low stab. Now, when you stop that low stab, you want to stop it at the wrist. Because if I stop it at the bicep, his wrist is still moving, do you see? And when I stop it, I need to lock out my arms and shrug my shoulders, because now my skeletal structure is supporting me. Because if it's, if it's bent, his arms stronger than mine, it will fold, you see? And what I also want to do is I want to pike my body away from it. So when it comes with that stab, I want to do that. And literally straight off that, boom, I'm doing that. Do you see? Oh, fucking sorry. <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. I'm with <laughs> So the what could I do? I could do this, repost and hit with that, then I could go, boom. 
Yeah? I could possibly from here stop this, kick him in the bollocks and then whack him on the back of the head. Yeah? I could stop this, buff him, leg it and run. Any number of things. But what I'm doing here, I'm using this as a synthetic ally to help me in this situation and I'm using it to a degree as a force multiplier because it's allowing me to bring more force in terms of my retaliation to this situation than if I just had skin. Make sense? The first part of the screw is this. You're just going to go, I don't have to go a minute, just stop the thrust. Boom. And again, stop the thrust. Boom. Stop the thrust. Boom. And the head. Yeah. And then the next one, we're going to go for that angle step into the neck. Lethal, right? So I want to stop the stop step. Boom. Stop the step. Stop the step. Get the fast fuck off. It's a, bag, a bag that you could use as a rucksack, in which case you're going to have a pad. Or you can have some sort of stick like structure which could replicate the umbrella or something that you've managed to pick up. Your choice. So you either have a stick or the bag to counter your knife wielding a sailor. Does that make sense? Based on what you've put together so far from this class or anything that you feel that you know, let's see what happens now. Yes? So let's have a little example. Can we use you? Take that off. Take that ridiculous thing off. Look, yeah, so we're going to use this stick with this kind of space proximity. Right? So maybe you, if you had a structure like a bag, you might say, stand where you are, fucking stay back, show me your hands. Right? So you are demanding a show of hands, taking away the element of surprise of his hand and hiding it behind his back. You also alert the people in the immediate vicinity that you are under assault. You're not doing that because anyone's going to help you. Because society today will not fucking help you. Do you know that? If a woman's getting raped, she's got more chance of help if she shouts fire than rape. It's how sad this society is with beta males now, right? But nonetheless, you are creating the disturbance. Someone now will probably pull out their phone, probably to morbidly film the situation, rather than phone the authorities, but nonetheless, you are creating a record of this event. If I am seen saying, stay back, put your fucking knife down, put it down, am I the person who's the agitator? Absolutely not. So now if I am forced to end you, and I do it successfully, I did it out of an act of sheer desperation, you understand? So when I face the second enemy, or the third enemy. So the first enemy is you. You've got to control the fear. Control your emotional response. Give yourself the green light permission in your head to be fucking combative. So that's the first adversary that you have, yes? Second adversary that you have is the counter denier. And then once you've dealt with him, the third adversary that you have are the consequences post event. Particularly if you find yourself in a court of law. So understand now, the incident with the guy driving illegally, who was over here illegally, who had a machete in his car that got pulled by a police officer. And the police officer pulled him, and the guy attacked him with the machete, and hacked him three times in the head. Nasty injuries. Lucky for him it was blunt, but it had nasty injuries. He managed to taser him. That copper ended up in court, prosecuted for tasering that adversary. That's the fucking world we live in, right? That's the world we live in. That person had better legal counsel as the attacker than that cop trying to keep his job. Unbelievable. So there's three enemies, right? But your, your first enemy is with you. You've got to overcome the emotional response. The second enemy is what you're dealing with. And the third enemy is the consequences of the event. So what you are seen doing and heard saying by impartial witnesses can work in your favour or to your detriment. So say the right fucking things. Put a knife down! Put it down now! This kind of thing. See the deal? <laughs> then he's going to not listen to you. He's going to close on you and deal with him whatever way he can. Understand that in the dealing with him... Oh, sorry, you're going to use the stick. No, no. Right? In the dealing with him, there's a still a high <laughs> probability that he's going to get cut. High probability. His objective is that he doesn't get cut anywhere lethally. Does that make sense? Yeah. As soon as the threat's down, you stay down. And I want you to get over here, which replicates the place of safety, and then I want you to self-medical triage and pull out your phone. You understand, Joe? 
Yes? What? Let's have you. Dude, man, what the fuck's behind you? Fuck it, wait! Don't leave me, you fucking bitch! Go! Oh, 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 o